my dear listeners, do you need a hand to hold you out of your fears, sins and failures, or a hand so strong to sustain, maintain and protect your life, family and blessings? Then you are welcome to the Regeneration Hour Radio Broadcast with Bishop Maxwell C. Corey. You are in today for another life-transforming encounter with God by His Spirit through His Word. The Bible says He sent forth His Word, and His Word healed them and delivered them from all their afflictions. As the Word of God comes your way, it is coming with power, precision, deliverance, and healing. All you have to do is to receive God's Word by faith as it speaks to you through His servant. You can now relax as I invite God's servant, Bishop Maxwell C. Corey, to preach. I bring you greetings of peace in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today is another wonderful new day that our Father in heaven has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. In this episode of the Regeneration Hour Radio Broadcast, I want to bring our way part two of the message on the topic, Divine Separation. Our Bible reading will be from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 14 to verse 18. I read, And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness And God saw that it was good. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and glory for another opportunity to hear your word, which is able to make us wise unto salvation. Speak to us this moment and grant us the grace to understand the same unto the healing of our lives and the glory of your holy name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, back to the message. As I said before now, I will be ministering on part two of the message, Divine Separation. And we read from Genesis chapter 1, verse 14 to verse 18. But when I delivered part one of this message, we read from verse 1 to verse 5 of Genesis chapter 1. And in that portion of the scripture, we took note of the beginning of God's creations of the universe and how God within seven days brought the then unformed chaotic planet Earth to beauty and order as he desired it. And this process of bringing planet Earth to beauty and order started in verse 2, where the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters that was covered with darkness. And God led that spoke and called forth light, and light beamed upon the earth from above immediately. And God saw that the light was good. And God divided or separated this good light from darkness, which hitherto covered the whole earth. And God gave name to this good light as day, D-A-Y. And the darkness he called night. And night or evening and daytime now make one full day. And I told us last week that this act of God in which he divided the light from the darkness brings up the issue of divine separation, which runs through the pages 
of the Bible and which is a must for any creation or good creation to fulfill its ordained purpose by God. Divine separation actually refers to definite acts of God to set apart a person or a thing, a creation of his, from others in order to achieve certain cancel of his for such a thing or a person. Divine separation puts into consideration God's reason for the creation of such a thing and what God desired to achieve through such a curation of his. Divine separation ensures the protection of the uniqueness, potency, and purity of each of God's creation in order for them to fulfill the reason for which they were curated. Just like we notice in verse 4 of Genesis chapter 1, that God separated light from darkness to enable light, fulfill God's cancer for it, maintain the sweetness which is associated with light. So, in this separation of light from darkness, as I said last week, God presents to us a pattern of separation. He desires his children and all God-fearing people to have from darkness, dark powers, and dark works. Now, after this separation of light from darkness, according to the portion of the scripture we read today, Genesis 1, 14 to 18, God led that curated light bearers and fixed them in the heavens above the earth to ensure perfect, permanent separation of light from darkness. These light bearers, we are, number one, the sun, S-U-N, which Bible calls the greater light. Number two, the moon, which Bible calls the lesser light. And then number three, the stars. The jobs of these lights or light bearers included to divide the day from night. Number two, for signs and seasons on planet Earth. Number three, for days and years. Number four, to give light to the earth to ensure that darkness will no more overtake the earth as it did before God restored order and beauty on planet earth. That is why even in the darkest hour of the night, you will always see stars twinkling up there in the sky, because after God called forth light, no portion of planet Earth was exclusively handed over to darkness. This is literally real. This is symbolically or prophetically real. Symbolically, it simply means that even in the midst of severe challenges around a child of God, somehow, you will see a little opening of God's deliverance or salvation or light appearing in that dark situation that has to do with any child of God that is physically alive here on planet Earth. So the fifth reason for the creation of the light bearers was to rule the day and the night. Now, our God, who called light out of darkness, curated these light bearers to fulfill the above counsels of his, which I mentioned. But there are things I would want to point out to us 
at this point in time. In St. John's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus Christ declared that he is the light of the world, and those who follow him will not walk in darkness. In St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, Jesus Christ, amongst other things, said that the children of God are the light of the world. So here we see Jesus mention two lights of this world. Number one, himself, St. John's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 12. Number two, children of God, St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. I would like to explain that just as in Genesis chapter 1, God made the greater light, sun, S-U-N, and made the lesser light, the moon. So is it spiritually real as much as it is physically real? Jesus Christ is the greater light. S-U-N, the son. That is why Bible calls him the son of righteousness that shall rise with healings in his wings in Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. While the church of Jesus Christ is the lesser light, the moon, and the children of God are the twinkling stars, but the church as a body is the moon. Let me explain further. The moon on its own, literally speaking, does not have light of its own. The moon receives light from the sun, depending on its angular position with the sun, and it throws that light to planet Earth. This is scientifically real. Now, spiritually, the church of Jesus Christ, that is also light, which is a lesser light, does not have light on its own. The light we have is the light of Jesus Christ. And we receive from Jesus and reflect it and brighten the dark corners around us. Notice also that when God created the greater light and the lesser light, that is the sun and the moon, he hung them up in the heavens. Genesis 1, 17. This is literally real. This is spiritually real. Jesus Christ, who is the greater light. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, that God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every other name. There are the mention of the name of Jesus. Every knee will bow and every mouth will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So Jesus Christ, who is the greater light, has been lifted up by God above principalities and powers and all power of darkness. As I said, in Genesis chapter 1, God did not only lift the sun and hang it above. God also lifted the moon and hung it above. That is to say, we, the church of Jesus Christ, that is symbolic of the moon, has also been lifted up by God above the powers of darkness and above the control and the dominion of the enemy. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5 to 7, that even when we were dead in sins, that God has quickened us together with Christ Jesus. For by grace we have been saved. 
and he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. So we, as light of the world, the lesser light, the moon, has also been lifted up and exalted by God above the powers of darkness. And we've been made to sit together with Christ Jesus in the heavenly places. Jesus also emphasized his fact of our being lifted up in Matthew 5.14 and said that we are like a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Now, I want you to know this, that according to the ordinance of God in this Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 to 18, the sun, which is the greater light, should rule the day. And the moon, the lesser light, should rule the night. And I want to let you know that right now, that we are in the night hours of human existence on planet Earth. From the time Jesus Christ died and rose from the dead, mankind entered into her evening hours. Because Jesus Christ was crucified in the evening hours, literally speaking. Jesus Christ was also crucified in the evening hours of mankind's existence on planet Earth, prophetically speaking. You can refer to my teachings and message on God's prophetic hours as it has to do with planet Earth. So, Prophetically speaking and literally speaking, Jesus was crucified in the evening hours. And from that moment, mankind entered into her evening hours, running to the midnight when the voice of the bridegroom will break forth. We are almost there. We do not know when it will strike exactly. The midnight hour and the voice of the bridegroom will come. And just as the moon rules the night or shines in the night, so is the church of Jesus Christ shining in these night hours of mankind's existence on planet Earth. And I want to speak to every child of God listening to me. If the moon is cut off from the light of the sun, the moon will show itself as a dead object without light. The light associated with the moon is determined by her relationship with the sun. In the same way, the light of every child of God and the church of Jesus Christ is because of who we are in Christ Jesus. My dear listener, if you are a child of God, I want to let you know, that you and I must shine as light in this world. We just cannot be hidden. And we must ensure that our manner of living is different, separated from darkness. Yes, the powers and agents of darkness might make attempts to resist us or to corrupt us, but they don't have that power to effectively do so, except we submit to them. The Bible says in St. John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 5, that the light shineth in the midst of darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. So anyone who is born again, born of the Spirit of God, wash with the blood of the Lamb of God. You should always bear this in mind, that Darkness does not have the power to understand you. You are a greater mystery. Darkness is mystery. Light is a greater mystery. Just as we have the mystery of iniquity, and we also have the great mystery of godliness, which the Bible explained to us was made real in our Lord Jesus Christ. You and I as light, we are greater mystery 
to darkness. Darkness does not understand us and does not have the power to control us. Number two, you and I, if you are born again, we are born from above. When you read St. John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 3, the Bible records, And Jesus answered and said unto him, That's Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, literal translation of this portion of the Bible from the Greek text, which was a language in which it was originally written, says, except a man be born from above. So you and I in Christ Jesus, we are born from above. And St. John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 31 says, He that is from above is above all. So every child of God, born of the Spirit of God, you are from above. And being from above, you are above all. You are greater than the schemings and the devices of dark powers. When the enemy rises to mess you up or to frustrate your life, you carry grace. The Spirit of God is in you, and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And they that are against you will not be able to succeed. And I want to plead with anyone out there listening to me who is not yet born again. You are subject to the vagaries of the wicked activities of powers of darkness and the vagaries of spiritual weather around you. That is to say, any harm can just come your way without you being able to effectively resist them. But when you receive Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior, you will be empowered to walk in victory and dominion. He will preserve you from every evil, and you will be sure of eternity with Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you and plead with anyone out there who is not yet born again, give Jesus a chance in your life. Let me ask you, why must you spend eternity in hell fire when Jesus Christ is offering you salvation that is full and free? You just need to tell him, Heavenly Father, I'm sorry for my sins. I cannot live righteously on my own. I ask that you come into my life. Wash me with the blood of Jesus and give me the power to be your child. And you will see God will answer you. Let me pray for you right away. Father, I pray for all that listen to me. Anyone out there repentant of his or her sins, be merciful unto them. Wash them with the blood of Jesus Christ. Make them whole and clean and give them the power to be your children. In Jesus' name. And let grace abound for my listeners to walk in light and be separated from darkness. In Jesus' name, amen. This is your brother, Bishop Maxwell Sikori, saying, God bless you.